Today we are going to do a pork mince and lamb mince burger, which will be my meat burger, with wafers on the side. I'm going to start with fries. I don't like doing fries the French way. I like making them thin wafer strips. This is a mandolin, and away you go. Why I use a mandolin is because of the wafer strips that come out this thin. Wafers are special to me, and I like taking care of it. Now it's frying time. I like to use a fryer, simply because I find it more economical. You get the right temperatures that you need to actually fry the potatoes in. So, here we go, sizzle time. I like putting four, five, six fries maximum at a time to ensure the potato wafers remain crispy and not soggy. Too many potato wafers means somebody going to suffer. And you can start feeling the wafer getting crispy. As soon as it gets golden brown on the side, like this something, then I'm thinking it's time to take it out. Be very, very careful when you take stuff out of the fryer, when you take this out of the fryer, it's very, very hot oil. It's very important to salt the wafers as soon as it comes out of the fryer. I like putting a little bit of rosemary. And found it. This looks like a party on a plate. No touching them till they get completely cooled down. That's when crispy becomes crispier. Fries are done. And time for my burgers now. The meat burger I'm making today is the simplest version of a meat burger. It's lamb mince and pork mince together. I like mixing two minces because sometimes the lamb mince alone can get a little bit dry. The pork gives it the juicy bit. It works. And I'm going to add some crackers. Now, what crackers does to a burger is to give it texture. It gives it its crunchiness along with the meat. I don't know, there's a strange alchemy that I totally adore. I need a Ziploc bag, about eight to 10 crackers for half a kilo of mince is good. And now I'm going to pound it. That's it, simple. So here I'm mixing lamb and pork and some parsley, a nice generous helping of parsley. One onion sliced, one red chili, because I like some fire. I like putting a heaped teaspoon of mustard, an egg to bind, one tablespoon of Worcester sauce, my pounded crackers, some pepper, and mix away. So you keep mixing it till you find that it all comes together. My mix ready. It's going to sit here. To fry my bacon, I need to put my pan on heat, and in goes my bacon. I don't like to oil my pan or grease my pan when I put bacon because all the strips, the white strips you see is bacon fat. You absolutely don't need the oil. In fact, I'm going to use the bacon fat to fry my onion so it gets that yum, yum, yum taste. That's done. Back on heat, and we're going to put some onions in. I'm going to put a small bit of butter. Now, into that, I want to put a little bit of ketchup and mustard to tie everything together. I don't know what it is about ketchup and onions. It's like an extramarital affair or something. Put a tad bit of olive oil to loosen up the bacon fat. It'll become all soft and translucent. 
and just perfect for my bun. So I'm going to just move this onto a smaller flame, keep it shut, and let the process of coming together continue. Time for my buns. Of course, I have to put some oil. How will it get toasty otherwise? Patty. You want to make a patty the size that fits inside that bun. Onions look absolutely divine and done. I like these marks that come. Time to turn a patty around. My bun looks nearly done. You see that? A little bit of springiness, not too dense and dying, and my burger patty is done. Now, all that is left for me to do is plate my awesome looking burger. Some bacon crispy bits. There you have it, my meat burger with rosemary wafers.